Hey guys, how are you? Uh, my name is Tyler. And I'm Lexi. And this is our bus, One Wild Ride. So we got our bus off of Craigslist. Um, we searched specifically for one with a rear handicap door because we wanted to build a garage back there for the motorcycles. And then after we designed it a bunch, we realized that it wasn't really gonna work out that way. <laughs> So we just built a rack on the back instead. But um, the bus we searched for for a while, we found this one on Craigslist, like I said. It has a DT-466E. We didn't really know much about diesel. We did our homework a little bit and just heard that this motor is really solid and it should last a really long time. Um, the guy we bought it from had it painted already. He had it registered as an RV in California where we were from. He did a ton of work on the motor before that and on the transmission. Um, he did an in-frame motor rebuild already mm -hmm. and he put new tires on the back and yeah we kind of didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into or how fast it was going to be <laughs> or what the transmission was like. It's really slow but it's running perfect so far. We've been on the road for about four months. Almost had the bus for a year now so. Yeah the bus build took about eight and then we left in March um, and only had two issues. We had bad injectors right away. Uh, the bus wasn't starting. Yeah, so we had to get a tow the first two weeks okay. into our trip. <laughs> yeah, we thought we had uh, coverage from AAA, but it wasn't, we, we weren't covered for the school bus, I guess. So we had to get a tow that was like $600 for about five miles. Yeah, because we had to get the wrecker out. And then we had a hole in our radiator and that was leaking. Uh, they patched that, let us stay in their shop. They gated us in and left one of the doors unlocked and said we can sleep there. They gave us a power cord, which is really nice. Um, that was actually a lot cooler because they did that for a couple hundred bucks and let us stay there. And the first problem that we had with the injectors, $900 for just the labor and then 200 for parts yeah. because we had to go to international because we didn't know anything at that time. We were like two months into leaving and the bus wasn't starting. Uh, so we won't make that mistake again, go into like a big kind of corporate, corporate place. place. Uh, all the little mom and pop shops have tended to, or have been a lot better. But since then it's been running really good. We check the oils and everything pretty much every time we fill up and make sure the transmission fluid's good. And then I check the motor oil all the time and the coolant. Um, and make sure it's always topped off just to kind of stay ahead of the game a little bit. Yeah, the parts are expensive, so. Yeah, we've heard of people getting buses from like auctions and eBay and stuff for dirt cheap, but it'll be a gasoline motor with 250,000 miles on it that's just about to go. And then they'll build the whole inside first and not really do any motor work, yeah. which we kind of went the other way around with it. And it's been good so far. Yeah, we've been to 12 states so far in four months, so. Kind of going a little fast, but we're ready uh, to slow down a bit now that we're in Colorado and uh, check out some scenery for a while and enjoy Colorado while we're here. All right, guys, welcome to our home. This is our living room area. We have a dinette here, and then we have a seven foot couch on this side, which can be a bed. We ended up putting a lot of color into it, we wanted it light and airy. Our couch actually serves as storage as well. Under here, we have tools, our winter clothes, since it's summer. And then we have like our toilet paper, our peat moss is under here, backpacks. Um, and then under the dinette, we have our inverter. And then we have all our cords to plug into shore power under this side. Our dinette we use the most out of anything, so I'm so happy we ended up putting that into our build. I think uh, we decided to do the dinette because we wanted like a spot to eat. We didn't want like fold out tables instead. And I think it came out really good. We were gonna make it into where the dinette table actually folds down into another bed, but we didn't have the time and we figured if people were sleeping over, they'd sleep on the couch instead. We just have the cushion. It doesn't fold out um, into another bed. Um, but once you take the pillows off, they're pretty, I mean, it's pretty wide. It's big enough for one or two people. <laughs> um, the cushions, we ended up getting cushions.com or customcushions.com. Um, you just send in your dimensions and pick your fabric and they send them right to you. So really? that's what we wanted to do, something easy. I was gonna try to sew them myself, but I had no idea what I was doing and we were kind of running out of time, so. Yeah, we ended up doing that and they came out really good. We ended up doing only like two or three inches for the depth or the thickness for them. And we wish we went a little thicker, but it's a little expensive the more thickness you have for your cushions. I think we put 500 into it. So I guess it's a little spendy, but it came out really good. And these are removable too, so we can wash them. 
And then for the dinette, we ended up getting extra bamboo from our friend who's a contractor. Um, he did the countertops for our kitchen and then we had extra just for the dinette. And uh, then we went for just the single pole. It's an RV pole for the dinette. It was like, what, like 12 bucks? from just an RV store that was local. We love it up here. We're really happy with our layout. We haven't regretted it since we started. The dinette definitely gets the most use out of anything, I think. Uh, this is where I sit too when Tyler drives. I feel the most comfortable there. Yeah, we eat there, we hang out. Yeah, most of the time is spent at the dinette. Not as much on the couch, surprisingly. <laughs> we had the pillows already. These are all just pillowcases on top of them. They're all from Amazon. These are Turkish pillows, the colored ones, and the white ones are from India. Uh, we ended up leaving all the windows because we wanted all the natural light in here and um, we wanted it to look really open. Also, uh, we wanted all that natural like light and we wanted all that breeze in here too. Um, plus, we didn't have the budget to do a roof raise, so we didn't want to replace all the windows doing that. I actually got um, these little snap things that hold the curtains in place and I got them from Etsy and they just snap in. We screwed them in too, just into the metal frame of the bus. And they work out great. And then we got our curtain rods from Target. They're pretty flimsy, like you can already tell these ones are kind of bowing in a little bit, but they've worked out so far. None of them have come out. And yeah, we kind of wanted to just stick with the black and white theme too with everything. The driving area, uh, we try to keep as original as possible. We just started the floor right here and then left everything original except for the new switch panel. Um, that was Amazon, super cheap, uh, just to be able to plug in our phones and everything like that. It has the USB port as well as the 12 volt uh, like cigarette lighter in there. And then another Amazon thing was our backup camera. It was only like $90. Um, it's wired all the way to the back. It's not wireless. And then we keep our GoPro up here just to kind of record stuff. And these to keep the heat out. Uh, the gauges hardly work. They work every once in a while. I mean, they work, but uh, the whole thing's kind of loose. And so sometimes when we first start going, it'll they'll all be frozen in place. And then after a couple stops, they'll kind of all wake up and get to where they're supposed to be. Um, the miles per hour is never really accurate. We usually use uh, Lexi's phone or something just to check every once in a while. Um, another thing we were considering was getting like a GPS that'll tell us our miles per hour. Um, the gas gauge, the temperature gauges, everything like that seemed to work really well though. And yeah, the important parts of the, of the gauges do work. Um, the miles per hour, we know we can't go any faster than 55, so it doesn't really matter. We're never gonna get a speeding ticket in this bus. <laughs> it's got a governor. We've kind of thought about taking it off, but we just didn't know if that would be good for the transmission that's in it. I don't want to put too much wear and tear on that because it's probably governed. I mean, I know it's governed from the school for a reason, but also we don't really need to go much faster than 55. So I figured that was going to be extra work to do. And then it's got an old CD player that came in it. Doesn't work, <laughs> but all of our fans work. The front heater works, the defrost works. And then we left everything up here pretty bare. like. You can still see all the fuses, just the old glove compartment where we keep random stuff like planners and we'll throw our phones and stuff like that in there. The cat stuff stays up here when we're parked, um, but when we're driving we put it back in the shower just so it doesn't kind of go all over the place. And then kept the original bus door. That's one of our favorite parts is to be able to still close it. And People probably think it's not very practical because a lot of air kind of blows through it still and you can obviously, if you really wanted to get in, you get in that way <laughs> just by breaking the window. But uh, we liked to be able to still have this or as original as possible in the front. Yeah, so the photos, my mom actually gave us a Polaroid camera to take with us in this little string with all the clips and stuff. She thought it'd be kind of a cool idea and we actually got a lot of compliments on it. We've done a photo for most of the places we've been in the last four months so it's kind of cool to just have it up there to remember to uh, remember where we've been and then there is storage in here we didn't do anything to it i can actually take these off and show you yeah they're just magnets there's still all this insulation and stuff like that and then the all the wiring for the lights but just the perfect place to keep the drone that we don't use that often <laughs> yeah we've lost it like by GP, the GPS like didn't connect once. I think we might've been too close to an airport or something, but it started going straight towards the ocean. 
and I was running after it in the sand, like, no, don't go in the ocean. <laughs> and I barely like caught GPS just for a split second enough to change the direction. And then it went straight back towards the parking lot, almost hit a bunch of cars and crashed into the wall and broke all the propellers. Um, so we don't fly it that often. <laughs> we probably need to practice a little bit more. But uh, yeah, and then other than that, in the front, we have the charge controller for our solar, just the Renogy Wanderer kit. Um, that was off Amazon as well, pretty much the base RV model. Yeah, our solar, Lexi actually figured out how to install the whole thing. She went up on the roof and wired all the panels together. We have just the base model was 400 watts, 100 watts a panel, four of them up there. It came with all the brackets, all the screws, everything like that to install them on the roof. And then we just connected them to our extra batteries, which are pretty much right underneath the dinette under the bus, there's the compartment for the original bus batteries, and it was enough space to fit both both of our deep cycle marine batteries. So we kind of just keep them in there. Whole electrical system was something that we had a ton of help with. That's one main thing that like our contractor friend helped us hook up the batteries uh, to the engine, all that stuff. And then he was kind of the voice of reason when we were doing the wiring for the solar into the extra batteries and stuff like that and then our inverter we had really no idea how they even worked when we first started he's like oh i'll help you put up the controller for your inverter and everything so you can keep an eye on your voltage and all your amp hours and we were like what does that even mean we really had like no clue so we kind of have like a grasp on it now but as far as the actual technical aspect of it we know how long we could have power for the day and we know how much stuff we can plug in and when we need to unplug things at night just to make sure we don't drain our battery um, we always just try and keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't get below like 12 volts usually but with the solar during the during the day on a nice day it's usually up to like 13 five or six with just the four panels and then that'll run our fridge pretty much all the time sometimes we'll turn the temperature down in the fridge it stays cold all through the night anyway just to kind of save some battery but so far we've been good with the amount of energy that we've had. We'll probably end up adding two more panels and probably another battery just to be safe. And when we feel like watching TV and stuff at night and not having to come stress on all the battery. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the front. We kept the stairs the same. Um, once we did the vinyl flooring, we just took the diamond plate off and then reattached it once we laid the flooring down. But other than that, the front stairs are the same. That's the fire extinguisher that was in here. The hand sanitizer thing we left in even I think it's empty we've never used it <laughs> we keep meaning on putting like a new one in there because it'd be kind of cool to have so for the flooring um, just vinyl uh, picked it up at Home Depot it was really cheap it was like 70 cents a square foot it's the water resistant um, it hasn't bowed anywhere any of the pieces haven't popped out we ended up actually buying so much of it extra that we didn't know what to do with a lot of it we were going to return it and then we kind of like integrated it into a lot of the trim that's in the back which i'll show you guys we use the whole backboard part of our bed is covered with the vinyl flooring um, but yeah it's been really good it's really easy to clean uh, it never really looks dirty stuff doesn't really stick to it well so it's just a breeze to clean we keep a swiffer and our broom and <laughs> usually stays pretty good it even came with like you're supposed to put the plastic down under it but yeah it's not the full fledged life proof it's just the water the waterproof kind and i mean we've tried to keep it as clean as possible in the last four months and not spill but we've had our fair share of spills already still and it's not stained it's not warped anyway so far um, it seems really durable and we love the color i think it kind of tied everything together that was one thing that was hard for us to decide on was the floor coloring because we knew that's going to be like the main aspect of the design of the, or the decor of the bus was everything had to kind of tie together. So it was definitely hard to pick, but I think we're pretty happy with it. It was one of the first ones like on display on the aisle in Home Depot to like one of the ones that I think everyone probably gets. And we looked through tons of other stuff with like vinyl and then different types of flooring. And then we ended up just going with this one because it was cheap and easy to install super easy and yeah no complaint so far we keep a little speaker we don't have like any kind of music other than this but this little bluetooth thing works good we'll kind of put it up there or wedge it back here underneath this blanket when we're driving and keep it charged it's loud enough to have music while we're driving because none of the original speakers are intact since we covered them all with the ceiling we kept the original bus lights those actually that's another thing about the front we only control our lights that are original bus lights from the switches up front so we have 
the two right here, it'll turn on both of these lights in the, or the ones in the bedroom and the ones in the living room. And then we just use a lamp for lighting. And then in the back, we have tons of the sticky kind of push button lights that are cheap and easy. We have those all over the bus. Um, they work fine. Uh, we don't really need light until it gets really dark because there's so much natural light in here even. Just one little lamp kind of pretty much lights up the whole place. With the light wood and everything like that, keeps it pretty bright in here. And yeah, as for the front, that's pretty much it. We kept it pretty simple. All right, guys, and this is our kitchen. We designed the kitchen with a lot of counter space because we love to cook. Um, we cook every night in it, so. It's pretty practical for us. Countertops we actually got from a contractor friend who had extra bamboo. So we ended up using that, that was for free. We used it over here too and we put a little backsplash of it right there. Um, our cabinets we got for free too. We just repurposed them. They were old and brown and gross. They had gold knobs. We just ended up painting them, sanding them down, and yeah, they came out really good. We don't mind them. Uh, we found the cabinets um, alongside the roads, so someone was just getting rid of them, probably redoing their own cabinets. And yeah, we just took them and refurbished them and made them look a lot more pretty. <laughs> um, we have these clip locks in here, so they don't come undone when we're driving. And there's just a little roller piece in here too. So and we open them and then, yeah, no, and we've been four months full time so far and we haven't had any issues with them. We love the larger cabinets just because we didn't end up doing drawers or anything inside. We just did these little Ikea storage shelves and they work out perfect for us. We keep our silverware in there, really simple and easy. Um, and there's just, I feel like there's a lot more storage we could deal with it. So this so, is a handicap bus. I believe they're a little bit taller when you get a handicap bus. So we didn't have any issues with the height. Tyler and I are both really tall. I'm 5'10 and Tyler's 6'2. So um, we were a little worried when we put the ceiling in, but we haven't had issues hitting our head yet. So yeah, I feel like we have more storage than we actually need. We were going to do cabinets above, but we didn't want, I felt like it enclosed it a little more and I wanted to keep it really open and airy. Since we are so tall, I feel like it would just be too much of an issue with something leaning over the sink and hitting our heads or something like that. Um, our friend who is a contractor actually had, uh, I think he, his friend had extra bamboo and we got it off that and just ended up using it for all of our countertops and our dinette table. So we had the perfect amount to do it. We ended up gluing some pieces together to fit them, but yeah, they came out really nice. We got lucky with the bamboo. Uh, we love our sink. It's just from Ikea. It was a cheap little sink. I think it was like 90 bucks or something. Um, I definitely wanted to keep the white and black theme of the appliances and cabinets. So we went with like a matte black finish for the faucet and I got it on Amazon. It's not an RV faucet so it kind of does use a lot of water. We have to make sure that we close it all the time or turn it off all the time when we're washing dishes. But we love it so far. We haven't had any issues with them. This is our water pump switch. We kept it close to the sink too. And when we're in the shower, we can just kind of like reach around and turn it on. Yeah, this is just our controller for the inverter. We can turn our inverter off this way too. Um, we love our stove. I'm so happy we went with the three burner and the oven one. Um, we bake all the time or I bake all the time. Tyler doesn't. Um, but it's just the Artwood RV range. And yeah, we've I mean, we cook on it every day, so we haven't had any issues. Um, I'm really happy we went with an oven because it's prepared us a lot of good meals in here. And we haven't ran out of propane since we left. Um, we keep our propane in the side right here, just next to it. It's a 20 gallon uh, propane tank and it's lasted us four months with baking and cooking all the time. Yeah, so when we cook, we always open up our hatch and one of the windows and probably one on this, this side. And we haven't had any issues with it getting smoky in here or anything. For all our utensils and like our coffee cups and stuff, these are Ikea. Nothing's fallen off since we left, so we got really lucky. I love it because we can have like a little plant here. We hang like our other dishes here. For these utensils, we had this in our old apartment and we we just put a Velcro little uh, sticky tape underneath it and it hasn't moved. And then we have like our little beer bottle opener here. For our hot water heater, we got a free one from um, a warehouse actually that my mom owns. 
and it sucks way too much uh, power up to use it so we haven't had hot water since we left I want to get a tankless one hopefully maybe in a few more months we can do that but yeah it just drains our battery way too fast and then uh, we have our French press here it's from planetary design they actually gifted us those we love it we use it every day and it's been really practical in the bus since it doesn't take up any power for we got like a little knife magnet it's ikea it's never failed us yet it's pretty strong on there so we hang uh even like our scissors on there too and they haven't fallen off when we're driving for this we just keep our cups in here it's another storage little thing from ikea but yeah keeping it all black and white for the appliances and storage stuff um for our cups those are the only ones we have we have four which i think is a lot for us for drinking cups and then we just have two coffee cups keeping it minimal <laughs> we ended up just doing a power strip up here and it works out for our lamp it runs our fan we just screwed it right in so it doesn't look too bad up there it's been hot in the midwest that's where we've mostly been and it just helps circulate air if we're not plugged in um, our ac doesn't work so yeah we use the fan instead um, so for our fridge i got the avanti super energy efficient uh, apartment size fridge it runs pretty much just off of our solar uh, that was one of the last things we added on the bus was solar and we are really happy we did because we never really have to worry about the fridge being on we could always turn the temperature down when uh, the sun goes down and the fridge will stay cold all night. So if we don't want to suck up that much power, it's pretty good. It has a freezer. There's a bunch of ice cream in there. <laughs> Not really a lot of stuff. Um, and then we got from, I think Walmart, these child locks for the fridge so it doesn't come open when we're driving. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good size. Uh, perfect for two people, I think. And as far as it sliding out, we didn't really brace it with anything, which a lot of people are skeptical about, but it won't tip out because of the top. And then in order for it to slide out, we really haven't gone fast enough or around crazy enough kind of turns for it to have to slide another three feet out to be dangerous at all. Um, plus we wedge brooms and like our Swiffer and all that kind of cleaning stuff on the side of the fridge to kind of keep it all in place. And then um, more pantry space up here. We don't really have a lot of food storage, but for us, it's pretty much enough. Lots of like dry food in here. And then in this shelf down here, um, underneath where some of our plates and stuff like that are on the bottom shelf, we keep more food down there. And that's enough for us for now. We haven't had any issues with like groceries and not having anywhere to put them because we only shop every couple of weeks or so. Um, and then as far as the shower, it's pretty tiny, but it gets the job done. We try to only use it when we have to. We just got the pan from, I think that was, that was a Home Depot pan for the bottom. And then once we realized that it was going to be small and not go all the way to the window, we built the shelf up to kind of um, gap the space in between the windows and this. And then that actually worked out really cool because we can put a bunch of soaps and stuff on there and we'll kind of like strap them in and we take them off when we're driving. And then the shower head is just an RV one um, that we ordered off Amazon also. It's got the little click kind of button so that when you're not using the water, you can turn it off without having to turn the pump off. Um, and then curtain wise, uh, the same kind of ones that we have for the rest of the bus is just the target curtains. Um, we bought one shower curtain and cut it and then use the other half of it to cover the windows. Everything back here is pretty much strapped in with bungees. Just these little hooks and then the curtain. And then these are all like accordion style doors from Lowe's. We use that for the shower and for the uh, toilet area. It seems to work good for now. They kind of get the job done. We didn't really want to put a bunch of time into doing full-on doors um, we thought about doing like a barn door at one point I've seen a lot of people do that but it, it was just a lot of weight a lot of extra work so it's worked good and then as far as the wood we always get questions about how it's treated we put a couple coats of a matte finish treatment on it and then there's a water barrier behind it but like i said we try not to use it that often and if we do it's just quick like military style showers turn the water off real quick when you're soaping up and then rinse off uh, and then I kind of try and like pat it dry a little bit if it gets too wet just to stay on top of it because it probably does need a few more coats. And then 
We kept the toilet area totally separate, mainly because of the wheel wells. We had to figure out what to do with the space with these. And we're really happy with where we put this because there's tons of leg room for the toilet, which is just a nature's head compost toilet. We bought this almost immediately when we started building the bus because we knew we didn't want to deal with a black water tank. My parents have had motorhomes forever and I've been to the places where you dump the black water tank and I've dealt with the smell for years and I know how gross it is and trying to do with that hose and get all of that out of there was not something that we wanted to do. But this thing's worked great. We try to use this as little as possible too. If we're anywhere that has their own facilities, we'll try and use those as much as possible just so we don't have to constantly change this. But we've only had to change the peat moss part of it twice in the last four months. So it's pretty good. And then as far as like toiletry storage, TJ Maxx, I think it was, that just had these like wicker baskets. Um, I just got screws and really big washers to kind of keep them in place on the wall and we can keep everything in there secure while we're driving. Um, it doesn't bounce around or anything like that. And it was super cheap and easy. I did it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Bathroom light wise, another just push button. Push button, little cheap light, lights it up enough at night and kept all the windows. So that's kind of nice when you're in there and you're doing your business or whatever. <laughs> so this one's a little bit bigger just because the way we built our counter space and kind of worked our way back. And then once we put the shower in, that wasn't long enough to really have it even with this wheel well. That's why this one's a tiny bit shorter. So there's a little bit of a gap in there, but it's kind of perfect because it's really comfortable. I've been in a lot of like motorhomes and stuff like that where you're really like squeezing in there tight with your legs. So it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome to have that much leg room. Um, and then the closet, we did just a curtain just to close it. Both of these same kind of curtain rods. That was like some cheap ones from Target, I think. They're just the expanding ones. This covers everything. Most of the clothes are Lexi's in here. Um, she got this from, I think, Target too. Wedges a bunch of stuff in there. And then uh, we got these like pants kind of hangers. So these are cool to save room. We keep most of our winter clothes underneath the bed or underneath the couch if uh, we're not using them because that's just, there's no space for it in here. I get a little tiny corner for my jackets. Um, and then towels at the bottom. We have a space heater buried back there somewhere if we ever end up using that. And then a bunch of shoes we keep, just another cheap kind of basket. Everything stays put in there because um, it's wedged so tight, I think. And then more bungees, bungees for everything, just as backup to keep stuff. Uh, that keeps these doors closed. Um, that's another thing I'll show you with the bathroom. These are on when we're driving. And then when we're going in here, another, so this is three sets of these Lowe's doors. These ones were too small to go for just one. So the two just snapped together with a magnet and it's enough privacy for us really. We didn't really think we had to make special doors just for the bathroom. And then they look kind of cool when they're pushed all the way back and they're strapped into place. This is our bedroom area. Uh, we have a queen size bed we were able to fit back here. Put a little shelf up, have a PlayStation 4, of course, I wasn't going to leave without that. Uh, that's Velcroed from the bottom with Velcro tape just so it doesn't slide around. And stuff like the remotes, we'll usually just throw on the bed when we're driving. We have a hotspot, AT&T, that actually works pretty good. And then we bought a new 32-inch smart TV. That's a Samsung, which is the same as my phone because I'm able to do the shared viewing from my phone. I have unlimited data on my phone so I can put the, like Netflix on and then screen it to this and be able to watch Netflix and stuff in bed without having to have any kind of internet or anything like that. It's pretty cool. We bought a TV mount that I put to the back stud and it kind of swivels but we keep it pushed all the way back and it kind of wedges in here and that's been pretty secure while we're driving. A couple times part of the uh, screw in the back has come loose so it's tilted a bit but then I've just tightened it up or finger tight and it won't move. We actually don't use it that often because by the time we're getting done driving and checking places out and stuff like that, we usually don't do too much uh, TV watching. We'll probably just use the laptop or something like that in bed. I tend to only, I've only played video games in here like 
maybe once or twice since I left, surprisingly enough. But when I do, it's during the day. So the solar will have everything on. I can have the TV and the PlayStation on. The pump for the water will be on if she's in there like cooking. Uh, all the lights will be on and everything w runs fine. But once it starts getting dark, I kind of tend to keep that stuff off. Uh, we'll only have like our phones charged or our cameras charging and like one light on just to make sure that we don't run out of power too fast. But uh, I've used the TV at night. Uh, it's pretty energy efficient just for a few hours through my phone. And then that has never really drained too much of the battery. But like I said, we don't really use the TV all that often. It's kind of just there just in case. And then I have like a big case of movies for the PlayStation. If we're ever somewhere where we're plugged in, we'll definitely use it then. But I don't try to use it off of our own power. <laughs> and then this is pretty much where I keep my clothes. Like I said, Lexi has all the closet space. Another Ikea thing. This was maybe 30 bucks and it's pretty deep. All the drawers just kind of come out. So I keep all my shirts and shorts and socks and underwear, stuff like that. It's super narrow. That I just drilled right into the studs too. And then keep my dirty clothes back here in an old uh, sleeping bag bag, <laughs> which works. And keep a carbon monoxide alarm by the bed just because we do have the propane inside, which a lot of people kind of get iffy about. Um, but we haven't had any problems with it. We never smell it or anything like that. We always turn it off and on when we're cooking. We turn it off right away. We have been pretty good about remembering to do that. But we keep that by the bed just in case. And then same kind of curtains behind the bed as the whole rest of the bus. It keeps it dark enough in here. And when there's lights on inside and you're outside with the window tint, you still can't see in here. Um, maybe figures every once in a while, but that's not not really anything to worry about. Our bed lifts up actually, and we have a bunch of storage under there. That's where we keep our 55 gallon fresh water tank on the right side of the bed. And then we have a 55 gallon gray water tank that's pretty much underneath the front of the wheel well, underneath the shower. And that is, yeah, directly under the sink in the shower. And then this half of the bed is all other storage, winter clothes, um, we have an ice chest under there. We have our suitcases for whenever we're going places and we pretty much filled those with other clothes that we don't need at the moment. We'll just interchange them when the season comes. And then on top of the bed, there is more storage. We have like a kind of a cargo net where we keep sleeping bags. Um, I, have, I have hats back there and then we have some books strapped to the top. AC, uh, Dometic, just the regular RV one. Um, it, has an option to have heat too but it was a few hundred dollars more and we kind of planned on traveling with the weather so we didn't get the heat option we really only use this when we're plugged into places if we're at rv parks or anything like that because it sucks up too much power also and then where we have it it does get the bedroom nice and cold but it won't the cold air won't come any further than pretty much this room if you walk right into this area it's like walking into a heat wave but i mean at least it's in the more important part of the bus if we are going to use it when we're sleeping i know a lot of people do do too but with the kind of power that we have we wouldn't be able to run that unless we're plugged in so it's kind of pointless i think if i had to do it over again i'd probably go with the mini split option instead i've been in a few other places, buses, and tiny homes that use that option, and it seems that it works way better than this thing. It kind of only blows out on this side, even though there's four vents. They kind of blow out on the sides. Not really anything blows out from this side, so I don't know if maybe I just installed it wrong or <laughs> put something in there, but it was really easy to install. Just cut a hole in the roof. It's two pieces. They both go in together. You bolt them together, and then you put the cover on the top, so that didn't really take any time. And then as far as the ceiling goes, we have tongue and groove all the way down the bus, all the way back. Uh, it's untreated. We didn't put any kind of finish on it. This was all from Home Depot, pretty cheap. Um, I didn't put any glue behind it either. I just screwed into the frame of the bus. Um, all the bows in the frame are about every foot and a half or so. So that's been good. I was a little nervous kind of going through places like New Orleans and stuff that was really bumpy and the roads were really bad that Maybe some of them were going to come loose or start coming off. But in four months, we've been through some pretty aggressive roads and it's stayed intact and people seem to love the look. I put like a putty over all the screw holes. Then once you start noticing them, you can realize that they're all over the place and you can see them, which is kind of something that 
it's a pet peeve of mine but for other people they just come in and they're like oh this is really cool and that's it for them but for me it's like i lay in bed and stare at it all the time and i'm like i can see all the screw holes <laughs> But yeah, other than that, for the bedroom, that's pretty much it. We keep a bunch of stuff wedged under here too uh, when we're driving. Like we have uh, like extra chairs and stuff, like outside chairs. And then the part that's on this side of the bed, we'll keep like backpacks, um, a foldable table down there. Um, sometimes we'll put extra blankets wedged down there. If it gets cold, we could just pull them up. And then the bedroom door is pretty much our favorite part of back here. It's one of our favorite parts of the bus, actually. We planned on doing a garage in the back, which was gonna go pretty much from the wall back. And once we moved everything up five and a half, six feet, it just wasn't gonna work with the wheel wells. The bed would have been sitting on top of the wheel wells and then we would have had no couch or counter space. So we ended up doing a custom rack on the back for all of our like bikes and motorcycles and stuff. And once we realized that the bed was gonna be perfect right here to open the door when we're parked next to a lake or a beach or some sort of cool scenery and now we can't imagine not having it that way it's probably the coolest part of the bus <laughs> we'll eventually do a screen of some sort maybe um, some sort of magnet and uh, screen kind of material that we can just stick on when we park just in case because we won't really leave it open when we're when we're sleeping just for that reason of bugs and we have a cat so we don't want her escaping when we're sleeping or we don't want any kind of other animals coming in while we're sleeping. And as far as lighting back here, we don't really use it. We have another one of these. We have a ton of these. They are cheap and they're not the best, but they definitely work for back here, especially if we're parked anywhere with a little bit of light outside, we'd have the curtains open a little bit and that on, or if we have the TV on, then it's, it's enough lighting. We really only come back here when we're ready to go to bed anyway. So. Um, we didn't really have to worry about the lights. We can always switch on the original bus lights from the front if we have to have lighting back here. Um, but then we have to walk all the way back up to the front to turn them off because we didn't do any light switches in the bus. But yeah, other than that, um, some hooks. Lexi has some hats and backpacks and stuff like that on there. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it for the bedroom. It's pretty simple. Um, the way the bed comes up is awful. We did that. We did it wrong. Um, it opens from the center, which makes no sense. Um, we were gonna do the like hydraulic kind of bed lifts and have it all come up this way. And then the way the framing of the bed worked, it wasn't, the hydraulic lifts weren't gonna fit that way. So I'll grab the corner of the bed and kind of like muscle it up really quick and then fold up half of the wood and it kind of like kickstands itself open to when I need to get in there. And it's not the smartest idea, but it it works for now um, that's another thing that we'll probably maybe fix in the future yeah so our water tank is underneath the bed pretty much right under our pillows it's 55 gallon and it's lasted us a while people ask how long 55 will last but we've never let it get all the way low to know exactly how long it lasts we try to top it off whenever we can but i think it's probably lasted a couple weeks like i said with the shower we only turn it on and off real quick and we don't use it as often as we can. We try to use other people or other facilities and dish wise, the same thing. We'll kind of turn on the water really quick, do some dishes, turn it off as we're cleaning them and then washing our hands and stuff. It's lots of hand sanitizer, stuff like that and lots of baby wipes for other things. So 55 is fine for two people. I know a lot of people go way bigger than that, but I think that's for long extravagant showers and stuff like that that we don't really need to do in here um, and we're usually not off grid for that long to where we won't go to a place where we have more water or where we can get more water so we've never run into running out we've gotten low but it's usually right around when we're getting to an area that we're going to be able to plug in and fill up or something like that so it's been good with 55 i think so we'll go check out the outside we'll see where we have the garage built which is behind this wall and check out the motorcycle rack where we plug in our shore power and where we fill up our water tank so this is the pretty much view from the outside of our handicap door we put a little a little lock on it just because there's no real other way to do it um, but that way we can open it from the inside and not have to worry about it. And this, we've kind of thought about doing drawers or something in here, but as of now, we haven't really needed that. Like I said, we put chairs, stuff like that, extra blankets kind of wedged in here when the door's closed and 
it's been fine. Yeah, and whenever we're parked like next to a lake or uh, somewhere with a really good view, we pop this open in the morning and it's really nice to have your like coffee there and just yep. hang out. Same kind relax. of curtains as the rest of the bus. So that opens that way. I actually just found out that this window is pretty much a, almost a standard RV size window that I can replace to where I can open it. It'll fold out, which would be kind of cool. That's just another thing to add to the list of stuff to do. <laughs> it's a work in progress always. But that way we wouldn't really have to worry about like leaving it open at night because we can just crack the window open and have a screen in there and not have to worry about bugs. And then as far as the back goes, everything's off right now because we just did a festival but the motorcycle goes on the rack um, our two bicycles and one of my good friends custom built the motorcycle rack pretty much all from scratch it's got three receivers it can hold a ton of weight and it was pretty much made for the fact that i'm going to take this and probably we're going to get some sort of moped or other motorcycle to be able yeah, to travel around i'm with. ready for a moped because <laughs> um, with the bus it's really difficult to see places when you have to park far outside of the city and then try to figure out how to go see stuff. We have our bicycles which help but sometimes places are just a little too far. So we'll do Walmarts obviously because you can sleep there and we can get the shopping done but it's not always the best options for groceries and stuff like that. So it'd be cool to be able to find a parking lot and then get on the moped and ride into town. But yeah so the rack is all custom. It's powder coated to be kind of weather resistant and like I said, it holds a bunch of weight and everything else just gets bungee to the motorcycle. Once the motorcycle's up, um, I kind of have a system for how all the bikes will fit. One goes upside down, the other one goes the other way. And then I'll run a, like a 30 foot cable through all of the bikes with a lock. And then I bungee pretty much both of the bicycles to the dirt bike. And it's been really sturdy. It's only gotten a little sketchy once and that was in Louisiana another... the roads were really bad and um, our bikes tipped over and gas was leaking everywhere but we just pulled into a gas station to save it right in time yeah we used our backup camera we looked in the camera and saw the bikes pretty much almost all the way off and that was the one and only time that it was a little sketchy and then our garage area we built which is behind the bed we keep a bunch of stuff back here that we don't need to use very often. We have like our easy up, uh, that kind of just stays in there on its own with the door closed. Backpacks, and then motorcycle gear. There's a bunch of tools back here. I have two toolboxes, more dirt bike helmets, bike pumps, um, extra oil. This is where we keep the generator, which we never really have to use. We've only used it, I think, twice since we left. Um, and that's just kind of back up when we're out and it's cloudy. Generator we got online. Yeah, we got the generator, I think, Amazon. Pretty much, I would say, like 90% of our bus is Amazon and Ikea, maybe Target. But we try to go as cheap as possible. And most of the stuff doesn't look too bad for being, you know, Ikea and Amazon. But it's just too easy to add stuff to your Amazon cart. So yeah, that worked out. I think all of our RV dump hoses and stuff are Amazon even. But yeah, so we keep this one up here with the hose to drain our gray water tank that way i can get to it when the bikes are on when everything's on here i can only open this door about eight inches so i made sure everything i'm going to need is with an arms reach, an arms reach length our hose to fill up our fresh water we have hung back here and then back on this side behind the generator is another bin like this that's full of peat moss we try to do like a about four to six bags pre-done that we leave in the bus underneath the couch so that when we do change the toilet, we don't have to come digging that. So we haven't even pulled that out once since we've left. And then on top of it, there's motorcycle gear and tarps and one extra empty gas can that's in the back that we'll use if uh, we're going somewhere far. I have one for regular gas for the motorcycle and then one for diesel if I need to. And what else back here? Yeah, we kept it all pretty bare in the back, just hooked everything and then we got lucky with the generator because when we built the back, we didn't have the generator yet and we didn't know what we were gonna do with it, whether or not we were gonna try and squeeze it onto the rack, try to build a mount underneath the bus. And we set it in here and it slides all the way back actually perfectly, like within millimeters. So that was back there before. And then once I kind of traveled for a while and realized that 
I needed to switch things around. Um, I moved that forward, put the peat moss in the back because that didn't really need to get pulled out ever. But yeah, we're not really in the back too often unless we're stopped for a while. That way we can pull all the bikes off and then pull out easy ups and water hose, stuff like that. Uh, on this side is where we fill up our fresh water. Guessed it again, Amazon. <laughs> it was like, how much was that? A few bucks. It was really cheap. It's really bad. I would recommend getting a good one of these that you could actually screw your hose into that stays so that you don't have to hold it. I mean, we don't have to hold ours, but it, ours doesn't have the uh, capability of just screwing on and then leaving the water at an RV place on all the time. I actually physically come out here, do it, put the hose in, watch it, and then once it starts shooting out, I turn the hose off, close it, and then that leaks for hours because water kind of splashes through the breather hole and kind of all down the side. And we'll drive for a few hours and park and it's still like leaking all down the side. So that's dumb, but <laughs> it works for now, I guess. Um, and then our shore power hookup is right there. And that is 30 amp. We have uh, an adapter piece to 50, but we don't ever use that because we only usually go places with 30. Um, this is the vent for our toilet it has a fan with a hose that's connected that comes out of right here. And then our gray water tank is mounted under here. Pretty standard. Um, that one we actually got from a friend of a friend found the tank for us. Um, the fresh water we had to order, it was some sort of site that can do pretty much any size, any gallon custom made. and. I think it came from Texas or somewhere, but it was kind of expensive to do it that way. So we got lucky with the gray water tank, but it's just uh, your typical empty tank. It's got the little cap that you unscrew. You pull the thing out when you have your hose connected and really basic battery bank, I'll show you. So bus batteries, extra batteries, they all kind of fit in there. If I end up doing more, I'll either have to build something under there or figure out another place to put more batteries to run. Um, if you want to follow our adventures, you can follow us at One Wild Ride Bus on Instagram. And for YouTube, it's One Wild Ride Bus as well, and it will be linked below.